Okay, so now we will be having our lecture on atomic theory. Okay, so in this lecture, we will have a discussion first about in the introdu introduction of to chemistry. So, ano ba yung chemistry? What does it stands for? Ano, an ano yung iba't ibang um, field ng chemistry? At kung ano-ano yung mga applications dito. Then, after that, we'll define some terms and classify different matters. So, what it define a matter? So, ano yung matter? Ano yung mga iba't ibang um, classification ng uh, matter? Okay. Then, pagkatapos, after that, we will be going to the structure of an atom. So, ano yung mga parts ng atom? Um, ano yung nucleus? And what are the different terms involving uh, atoms? And we will go a little um, introduction to periodic table. And we will be solving the different types of uh, properties that we are going to see with regards to um, elements. Okay? Okay, so now let's first define chemistry. So chemistry is a branch of science which deals with the study of matter and the changes it undergoes. So chemistry is a branch of science. So it is part of science, part ito ng siyensya na kung saan ating uh, pinag-aaralan ang matter at kung ano-ano yung mga pagbabago na, uh, na pwedeng pagdaanan ng isang uh, matter o ng isang bagay. Okay, so yun yung chemistry. So, may iba't ibang branches or fields ang chemistry. So, ang, ang nilista ko ito yung lima na pinaka-common. So, una is organic chemistry. So, ang organic chemistry deals with organic substances. So, yung mga uh, substances na may carbon sa kanilang chemical composition. Tapos, in organic chemistry, yung... Um, yung field ng chemistry na nag-aaral tungkol sa mga inorganic substances o yung mga substances na walang carbon. Then we have physical chemistry. So this is the branch of chemistry which deals um, the application of chemistry to, to physics or the intermingling of two fields which is chemistry and physics. Then we have an analytical chemistry in which in this uh, branch of chemistry, the the field focuses on analyzing the properties, the composition of each of the substances in order for those substances can, uh, can be fully understand and could have applications to technology. Then lastly is biochemistry, which is, uh, as of now, we, regards to our pandemic, is one of the most useful field of chemistry. So it deals with the uh, chemistry of life. So what does it mean? So what are the chemis the chemicals that affect life? Is, uh, um, for example, our human body, ano-ano yung mga chemical na nasa ating katawan at kung paano ito nakaka sa ating katawan. So yun yung um, field ng biochemistry. Okay? So now we will go on to matter. So anything that occupies space and has mass, it is composed of tiny particles called Atom. So we know what is matter ever, ever since from elementary we have been studying what is matter. Matter is anything that occupies space and has mass. So that is the two criteria that a matter should have. Kailangan meron siyang mass at kailangan nag-uokupa nag siya ng espasyo. So yun yung matter. Tapos yung matter is composed of tiny particles called atoms. So when we say atom, so, atom is the smallest part or the smallest particle of um, matter that cannot be decomposed further to parts which are um, not related to each other. So, ano yung ibig sabihin nun? Ang atom ay hindi natin pwede i-decompose or i-divide um, into uh, parts na hindi sila related sa bawat isa. So, yun yung ay ibig sabihin ng um, uh, cannot be divided into um, uh, distinct parts, okay? Because ang um, sa loob ng atom may yung iba't ibang parts, but they are all connected among each other. Okay. Next, we have the properties of matter. So we we'll first define what is a property or properties. Th those are characteristics that differentiate a substance from all other substances. So meaning yun yung uh, katangian na kung saan sasabi natin itong bagay na to ay iba sa isang bagay. Kung yari, um, ano yung, ano yung pag, 
ano yung pagkakaiba ng plastic sa um, sa metal so yung plastic is uh, medyo malambot at kapag uh, tinapat mo sa apoy ay madaling natutunaw habang yung metal is matigas tapos kailangan mo pa ng mas mataas na temperatura para ma ano siya ma, malusaw okay then we have the different types of properties we have intrinsic properties so properties of the substance that are independent of the shape size shape and size of a substance so meaning ito yung mga katangian na hindi nakadepende sa size o um, sa laki o sa itsura ng isang bagay so ang ang isa sa example nito is density na kung saan ay atin i-discuss sa mga susunod na lesson. Next, we have intrinsic properties. So, properties of the substance that are related to its size and shape. So, an example of these properties is volume. Okay. So, extrinsic properties, uh, those are properties so kanagihan ng isang bagay na may kinalaman sa kanyang laki o kanyang itsura. Okay. Or hugis. Then you have endothermic properties, so physical or chemical changes which causes energy release from the substance to the surrounding. So these are properties or chemical changes na kung saan yung bagay or yung, uh, yung, isang, ano, yung isang substance ay nag-release ng energy sa kanyang paligid. So kunyari, yung yellow. After few after few minutes or few hours, matutunaw ito and it will transform into water. So meaning the there is an energy release from that um, from that ice. So later on we will know what type of energy. So sa mga susunod na discussion, what type of energy is released when ice melts into water. Then you have endothermic properties of physical or chemical changes in which energy is absorbed by the substance. So when there is an absorption of energy, then it will be endothermic properties. Okay? Now we go to the classification of matter. So we have here an uh, um, chart which um, which um, ranks the, the classification of matter. So we have on the top matter. So this is everything that we see that has weight or mass and occupy space then we have two types of matter which is pure substance and mixture then the pure substance it is composed it is further divided into, into two we have compound and element then the element is further divided into metals and non-metals so we will see this type of element metals and non-metals later on when we discuss about periodic table we have mixture also is subdivided into two we have homogeneous and heterogeneous um, mixture so we will define each of these term so we have pure substance a matter that has definite composition and a definite boiling point so ibig sabihin ito yung mga bagay na may um may eksaktong composition at may um eksaktong boiling point ano yung boiling point ito yung um temperatura na kung saan yung tubig ay nagboboil or um, lahat ng ano, substance ay nagboboil not only um, tubig so ang, ang, when, when we go to chemistry when we see boiling point it is the state ito yung uh, temperatura na kung saan yung isang um, yung isang substance ay, which is in the liquid form ay nagsisimulang maging steam or which, which is slowly transforming into a gas Form. So, yan yung ibig sabihin ng boiling point. Element. So, substance that is composed of only one kind of atom. So, mga bagay na isang atom lang ang kanyang uh, composition. So, yun yung element. Then, we have compound. A substance that is composed of two or more elements chemically combined in definite and constant proportion. So, a, a compound is a substance that is composed of two or more elements. So it is a combination of element that is combined in definite and constant proportion. An example of an element is hydrogen. An example of a compound is H2O or water. So 
hydrogen, single atom, water, H2O, so consists of two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. Then we go to mixture. So mixture is matter that has no definite boiling point nor definite composition. It is a combination of various substances which can be separated by chemical means. Homogeneous mixture whose, whose parts or composition are not distinguishable even to some extent through a microscope. So a mixture is a mixture of uh, substance or a, a mixture of matter which has no definite composition. Okay? And the first type of mixture is homogeneous mixture in which the parts are not readily distinguishable even to some extent through a microscope. An example of homogeneous mixture is the mixture of um, water and sugar. So af after the sugar melts, you cannot distinguish even through a microscope which part of that mixture is what is part of the sugar. Okay, so that is a homogeneous mixture. And heterogeneous mixture is a mixture whose parts or composition are readily visible or easily identifiable. So meaning, madali mo makikita yung mga part ng isang heterogeneous mixture. An example of that is halo-halo. When you, when you look at halo-halo, you will know what are the ingredients of a halo-halo. So that a halo-halo is a heterogeneous mixture. Then we have the laws that um, that is used by uh, the study of chemistry. So first, you have the law of conservation of mass. Mass can neither be created nor destroyed. So what does it mean? So yung mass or yung amount ng material na nasa isang bagay, so yun, yun yung definition ng mass, mass is the amount of matter present in an object. So it cannot be created. So we, we cannot create mass nor destroy it. So the mass inside the universe as proven by experiments is constant. What happened when we say, sir, it is it is not constant kasi kapag namatay tayo, nabubulok tayo, so nawawala yung mass natin. No. When we die, we wrap and what happened to our to the elements that compose our body, it goes back to the soil, goes back to the surroundings. So meaning, our mass is still there, but it is um, transformed to its fundamental parts, which is in terms of its element. Okay? So that's why all of us, there is a saying in astronomy that humans are the child or children of stars. Why? Because a star consists of hydrogen, some helium, oxygen. Later on, it's a, in its life, it will create oxygen. So, we humans is, consists of hydrogen and oxygen. So, where does the hydrogen and oxygen came, came from? So, it came from the sun. All all of those, almost all of the elements in the predictive bowl has something to do with the sun or the sun has a part of which has some part in, on how those elements are created. So that's why because we are consistent, uh, co uh, consist of elements, then we are the children of the sun. Okay, so that is one of the quotes from astronomy. So humans are the children of the sun. Then we go to the law of conservation of energy. So energy can neither be created nor destroyed. It can only be transformed from one form to another. So what does it mean? Yung enerhiya ay hindi pwedeng um, uh, i-create or gawin at hindi ito pwedeng sirain or be destroyed. So what is an energy? So an energy is the ability to do work when we are when we go to physics or if you have uh, if you remember on your uh, physics in high school. So it can it is the ability to do work. So meaning if we don't have energy, we cannot move, we cannot um, create something or even our body could not function well if we don't have energy. So energy is the reason why we are moving in our body oh. then 
um, anything around us is also influenced by energy. The sun gives up solar energy so that the plants could um, create food via photosynthesis. Then our our gadgets are powered by electrical energy, which is uh, generated through the transformation of um, some uh, some other forms of energy like mechanical chemical energy so everything around us is influenced by energy so energy cannot be created nor it cannot nor it can be destroyed so it it is constant also like mass so therefore uh, if if you if you are well versed enough in physics and in chemistry uh, you have known the equation E equals mc squared. Okay, we will maybe I just write here. Okay. Okay, we have E equals mc squared. So this formula is uh, derived by Albert Einstein in which it states that energy is equal to mass times the square of the speed of light so e as e is for energy m is for mass and c is for the speed of light which is three times 10 to the power of eight meters per second squared so what this formula stands for is that we can see that there is a relationship between energy and mass so if we have a mass and we subjected it to the square of the speed of life light then the, then that mass can be transformed into energy so when we say that the the amount of energy in the universe is constant as well as the mass so that constant is governed by this formula okay so the uh, so the energy in our universe is related to mass Okay, so maybe when we will go to your physics, we could have this one, the E equals mc squared, which is all about the theory of relativity. But we just um, stop on this uh, on this introduction of that for on that formula because we are just only talking about the law of conservation of energy. Then another statement for this law is that it can only be transformed from one form to another, meaning energy can only be transformed from one form to another. So. For example, chemical energy is transformed into electrical energy. So, the example of that one is the battery. So, the dry cell or the wet cell. So, there is a there, there is a transformation of chemical energy inside the plate, the cathode and the anode of your battery through to a, a electrical energy which um which light up your cell phone, your flashlight and whatsoever uh, gadgets that uses battery then you have also the law of definite composition so a pure substance uh, a pure compound sorry for that is always made up of same constituent elements combined in a definite proportion by weight so what what does it mean so a pure compound so when we say compound is a combination of element is always made up of the same constituents of element combined in a definite proportion by weight. So what does it mean? When we say H2O, okay, H2O, it is um, made up of two atoms of hydrogen and an atom of oxygen. So meaning this composition is constant to any form of water the molecule of H of water is H2O because that is a pure compound okay then we have the law of multiple proportion when two elements react to form one to form more than once more than one compound this is not once but one the different weights of that com of that combined with a fixed weight of that of the other are in the ratio of small numbers so meaning even if the if the compounds or the elements are mixed to one another to form another compound then their weight is still a ratio of 
the whole of or of the total weight. So going back to our example H2O, so this is 2H plus O. So meaning if our H2O is 30 grams, so we have 2 here, so we could say that uh, we could say that the 2, 2 atoms of hydrogen may consist um, let's say 20% of the weight of total weight of our H2O and the remaining 80% for our oxygen. So that is the law of multiple proportions. Okay? Then we go now directly to the structure of atoms. Okay. So atoms are the smallest particle of an element and molecules are the smallest particles of a compound. So when we say hydrogen, so hydrogen is an atom, H2O is a molecule. So H2O is a molecule of a compound which we call water. Hydrogen is the atom of an element in which we call that element as hydrogen. Then when um, hydrogen or an atom transfer electrons, we have these two um, terms. We have the anode and the cathode. So anode is a positively charged electrode. So meaning there is a deficit of electron on that atom. Cathode is a negatively charged electrode, meaning there is an excess of electron on that atom. So, anode, may kakulangan sa electron. So, meaning, yung anode, an atom which is an anode, yung electron niya ay lumipat sa ibang uh, atom. At yung nilipatan na atom ay magiging cathode kasi meron siyang uh, excess o mayroon siyang sobra na electron na galing doon sa anode. So, we will discuss this further anode and cathode on our um, discussion about chemical reactions. Then we have the atom is composed of three smaller subatomic particles. So we have now the parts of an atom. First, we have electron. So it is the particle with a negative charge or with a rel relative charge of negative 1 and a very small mass of 0 0.0055 atomic mass unit. Okay, so atomic mass unit is in terms of uh, the mass of proton. Okay, but we will just skip that one. So we have, or you could review the physical constant in which we have discussed on our previous lecture about uh, unit conversion. Okay, so the electric charge of an electron is negative 1.602 times 10 to the power of negative 19. C is column. Then the unit mass in kilogram is 9.11 times 10 to the power of negative 31 kilograms. Okay, so these numbers are expressed in scientific notation. So if you have your scientific, your scientific calculator, so you could easily input this number. Then you have proton. So it's a particle with a relative mass of positive 1 and a very small mass of 1.0073 AMU. So the electric charge of an electron uh, of a proton is the same with the um, electric charge of electron except that it is positive. Then the unit mass of um, proton is 1.673 times to the power of negative 27 kilogram. Then the neutron is a neutral or uncharged particle with a mass of 1.0087 atomic mass unit. So the electric charge, because it is neutral, so it has no charge, none, and the mass is somewhat um, equal to proton at 1.675 times 10 to the power of negative 27 kilograms. Next, we will go to nucleus. So the nucleus is the central part of an atom which protons and neutrons are located. So the nucleus has a diameter of about 10 to the negative 5 um, or 10 to the negative 6 nanometer. Then whereas the diameter of the entire atom is the range of 1 to 5 or 0 0.1 to um, 0 0.5 nanometer. Okay, so when we say a nucleus, okay, have this one first. I will just uh, try to 
draw here the atom okay so for example we have an atom here so this is the will i will draw the Bohr model of atom okay so we will not go on further who who develop the the sketch or the um, description or the uh, illustration of an atom so there are theories about that we have Ernest Rutherford Bohr so many scientists I, I believe that you have already um, passed through that one during your chemistry days in high school okay so this is the central part of an atom which we call as the nucleus okay then we have here this is called the orbit okay some call this one as the orbitals Okay, so the orbital of an atom is depending on the number of electrons which reside on the orbitals. So this is our electron. So, of course, it is an orbit. So therefore, our electron is orbiting outside the nucleus. So the nucleus, in the nucleus, it is consists of proton and neutron. Okay. So the neutron and the proton is found on the nucleus and the electron is orbiting around the nucleus, okay? So the orbitals, like I said, is depending on the number of uh, electrons present in an atom and there is uh, some type of way to, de to determining that one by using the electron configuration, which I will not tackle it on this um, discussion so maybe you could um, review your chemistry in high school but it is beyond the scope of our topic so the orbital is named after the, the letters of the alphabet so the highest is M no? so I'm not uh, I'm not uh, particular on the the whole of this uh, of the or oh, orbitals because it's beyond the topic of our uh, it is beyond our topic but the orbitals like i said is depending on the number of electrons present in the atom then we have atomic number so atomic number is the na is the number of protons in the nucleus so when we say the atomic number so the atomic number is the number of protons in the nucleus and the number of protons in a nucleus for a stable or a base atom is equal also to the electrons. So, for example, if you have an atom or an or a element which has a proton of three, so this is your uh, proton. Therefore, your electron also is three. Okay. So the main difference among the two is the neutron so the neutron does not behave the same with the um, proton and electron if you have mass number or atomic weight so the mass number is the sum of the protons and neutrons in the atom okay so the sum of protons and neutrons in the atom so meaning the the atomic number or uh, the, the mass number or the atomic weight which is called one as aw is equal to the number of protons plus the number of neutron. Then we have formula and molecular weight. So formula weight is used for compounds that are made up of ions and have pri primarily ionic bonding. So when we say getting the formula weight of a certain uh, compound, so that compound must be uh, bonded or that compound must be uh, banded through ionic bonding. Then you have molecular weight is used for compounds that are composed of molecules and have primarily covalent bonding or when we say covalent bonding that is the sharing of electrons. So we have the note so formula weight is convenient as it can be used for both ionic and covalent bonding but molecular weight will be used only for covalent compounds which consists of molecules like sucrose so we have C12, H2 h 2 o 11 and ethyl alcohol, C2H5OH, and carbon monoxide, which is CO. Okay? So that is now our, um, our the difference between formula weight and molecular weight. 
So we go now to a short introduction to periodic table. So this is basically the periodic table. So as of this time, Okay, so as of this time, we have 117 elements. Okay, I believe this periodic table does not have. Okay, it is just fine here, so it is somewhat cut off. Okay, so maybe we should find another periodic table that has the complete one. Okay, so it's just fine. Okay, this one, let's just see if this is complete. So, there are a lot of uh, periodic tables on the internet, okay, and usually they are updated, so all you need to do is to find which of those is updated. When we say updated, so it is, um, it, uh, it pertains to the it pertains to the number of elements that are currently inside the periodic table okay but basically in the study of chemistry um, we are only concerned with the um, what we say as the first generation elements so the elements that are first discovered in our uh, study of chemistry okay so we're just loading here the periodic table I believe we could not find a periodic table that is much clearer How about this one okay so it is smaller than okay so you should find a much bigger so how about this one Maybe we should replace this one with a periodic table. Okay. Looks like I run up of real estate. Okay, so we have here a periodic table. So the first, um, the first element of the periodic table is hydrogen. So it is uh, red from this part. So from left to right. So we have hydrogen. So the order in which it is red is hydrogen, hydrogen, helium. Lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon, uh, sodium, magnesium, aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, argon, potassium, calcium, scadium, titanium, vanadium, chromium, manganese, iron, cobalt, nickel, copper, zinc, uh, gallium, germanium, arsenic, uh, this is... Uh, Cerulean, then we have also uh, bromine and krypton, so on and so forth. So if you want to have the exact name of this one, then you could add, I will send a picture of this one to our Facebook group and you could see this periodic table of elements. So how to read the periodic table of elements in each of the boxes? So we have on the upper uh, left corner, it is written the atomic number then we have the symbol then we have the name of the element and we have the atomics atomic mass or um, or the mass number and we have also the different types of the element depending on their um, color so for this one we have the alkali metal so these are the alkali metals for this color then we have the alkali earth okay so if you have this one, alkali earth, then we have the transition metals. So these are the transition metals here. All of these are the transition metals. Then we have the basic metals. So we have the aluminum, gallium, uh, 
iridium tin uh, this is uh, this is talium then lead then bismuth then we have these two new elements so as of now it's 118 elements then we have also the semi metal okay this one so these are usually used in semi semiconductor uh, semiconductor production especially on the making of diodes and transistors then we have non metals so this one are non metals halogens so usually used in halogen bulbs we have the noble gases so these types of of elements are not reactive to any other element because they are currently uh, they are considered as the stable elements then we have the lactonide and the actonides okay so of course each of these will be discussed further when we go deeper to the uh, types of elements in the periodic table okay so basically this is how our um our periodic table looks like so as uh, as i said that the uh, the number of elements in the periodic table is constantly updated so if we have here the 118 who knows the uh, as of now there is someone on a certain uh, chemical laboratory discovered a new or created a new element so like so because almost uh, some of these elements are naturally occurring what does it mean so it can be found in nature so hydrogen it is the the, the basic composition or the primary composition of the sun and also helium then we have lithium beryllium oxygen nitrogen so those are natural elements but we have also the so-called man-made elements or the elements that are created on laboratories so as uh, some of those are here these the these new types of element okay so so the the predictable of element is one of our instruments for us to know how to characterize each of the elements which are present in our universe okay so now we will go to solving the molecular or the formula weight of some compounds so we have find the formula weight of water so for this one we need to have our periodic table so we will solve this one okay so we have solution so find the formula weight of water so first we will write the formula for water the formula for water is h2o so what does it mean so h2o we have two atoms for hydrogen and one atom for oxygen okay so the h2 here is that the two is for hydrogen when there is no subscript so meaning that is one okay then we will now see what is the atomic mass or the mass number for hard hydrogen so if we go to our um predictable so if you cannot see this one we'll just zoom okay try to zoom that one okay that is 1.08 or we just round that one into one okay let me just first resize the screen so this is one so what will happen now we have two times one so this is one atomic mass unit because the atomic number or the mass number is in terms of atomic mass unit then we have for oxygen okay oxygen so maybe we just zoom again okay so for oxygen so if you can see oxygen is 15.999 okay i hope it's clear on the screen okay so 15.999 so we we'll just resize again our screen here this is 74 okay so this is 16 so we have 1 times 16 amu so we have 2 times 1 so we have 2 amu atomic mass unit and 1 times 16 is equal to 16 amu so we have 
18 AMU or 18 atomic mass unit. And this is now our for formula weight. Okay? Next example. So find the formula weight of sucrose. So sucrose is a covalent band or a co compound uh, which is uh, made through co covalent banding. So we could say also that we need to find the molecular weight. So maybe just change this one into molecular weight. Okay. Molecular weight. Okay. So sucrose, so the formula for sucrose. Okay, solution. The formula for sucrose is this one, C12, H22, and O11. Okay, so we have C12, H22, I said 12, but I, I wrote down 11. C12, H22, O11. So let's check. Okay. So meaning, the compound sucrose consists of 12, um, 12 atoms of carbon, 22 atoms of hydrogen, and 11 atoms of oxygen. Okay. So we have 12 carbon, so we need to find the atomic weight for uh, the, uh, the atomic weight or mass number for carbon. Okay, so let's just zoom that one here. Okay, maybe. Okay. Put in the center of the screen. So we have here carbon. So carbon is 12.011. So we could round that one to 12. Okay. Let's just bring the screen again. So that is 12. Okay. So this is 12. Oh no. Uh, 12 times 12 atoms times 12 AMU. Then we have 22. So for hydrogen, we have, from the previous example, it is also 1 AMU. Okay, we just 1 AMU. Then for oxygen, 11 times 16 AMU. So we, we, de we determine the atomic mass of hydrogen and oxygen from our previous example. Okay. So we have 12 times 12, that is 144. Then we have 22 times 1, that is 22. Then um, 11 times 16. Okay, so if you have your calculator, you could calculate that one. So it's better for you to secure a scientific calculator. So that is 176. Okay. 176 you will add up all this one so that will be 12 plus 1 here so you, so you have 14 then we have 1 that is 342 so our answer is equal to 342 amu this is molecular weight okay Okay, so we have now our answer for example number 2. Okay, so I believe that will be all for this discussion or this lecture about atomic theories. We have discussed what is chemistry, the branches of chemistry, the definition of properties, the, the, the different properties um, on a substance, then the, the classification of matter. Okay. Then the definition of each classification, the laws of chemistry, conservation of mass, conservation of energy, definite composition, uh, multiple proportion. Then we have the structure of atom, the different types of charge or electrode, the composition of an atom, the nucleus, the uh, illustration of an atom. Then we have the atomic number and uh, atomic mass or atomic weight then we have formula weight and, and molecular weight a short um, discussion on the on the appearance of the periodic table and how to use the the periodic table then we solve examples on formula weight and molecular weight okay 
so i hope you understand something on this video so thank you for watching and as always enjoy learning